Welcome everybody to another episode of Nick's Missile 3. I'm Patricia and I'm here with Edmund James. Hello. So today we're going to be discussing about the long delayed sequel to a series of unfortunate events. Around the early 2000s, there were two genres of movies that were becoming massively popular with the general audience. Superhero movies and fantasy movies. The superhero movies that were becoming massively popular were Spider-Man and X-Men. And the fantasy movies that were becoming popular were Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. And then a few years later, we would have The Chronicles of Narnia. And ever since then, everybody tried to do adaptations of those kind of movies to see if they can cash in on the popularity. With Nickelodeon... They try to cash in on the popularity of the fantasy genre with a series of unfortunate events which was based off of a book series by Lemony Snicket. And I remember when this book first came out that everybody was going completely crazy about it. It was everywhere. There was like a mystery to Lemony Snicket. Like they wanted to know about who he was and, you know, the kind of quirky humor that the books had. And it was even referenced in an episode of Arthur, I think, in which um, in which one of the characters was reading a kind of like a parody of a series of unfortunate events. And eventually she met up with the author who turned out to be, surprise, surprise, somewhat mysterious. I'll admit, even though I've not watched the show in um, in over a decade, um, I actually have to admit, for a show on PBS Kids, it's actually quite clever. Yeah, and to think of it, it is currently what? it is currently like one of the longest lasting shows ever on TV. But what baffles me is that there were loads of people online that act, that don't realize that the show is still going. They keep posting it in like nostalgia pages as if like the show ended. Yeah, I know. Keep... It's funny. Here's the thing: the show first debuted in 1996, and it's still going. <laughs> And nobody knows. And nobody's complaining about it. It's like, oh, SpongeBob is going on for too long. Oh, the Fairly Odd Parents is going on for too long. Oh, Family Guy. Oh, The Simpson. It's like nobody's saying that about Arthur. I guess it, it makes sense, of course, because Arthur is based off of a children's book, and you know, you watch it on PBS when you're a kid, and then eventually, when you see other shows, you kind of just move on. But Anyway, uh, so yeah, um, a series of unfortunate events. If you don't know what it's about, it's about these three kids whose parents passed away, and they move in into um, their relative's place named Count Olaf into his place so that they can be able to um, eventually gain their parents' fortune. And what Count Olaf wants to do is that he wants to get rid of the children and, and claim the inheritance by himself. And so he tries everything he can so he can get rid of the kids. But the kids are very, very smart, and they can see through Count Olaf's scheme, and they prevent him from doing so. Yeah, the, the book goes into, like, a whole bunch of, like, really depressing moments. Like, you know, you have one instance in which, you know, they go over to another relative, but then the relative passes away. And then you have this other moment in which they go over to this one place where they think they can find happiness, but, oh, something bad happens. So it, it's like what the book says. It's a series of unfortunate events that happens to these really nice kids. Uh, Nickelodeon picked up the, uh, the, the, uh, the rights to the series and made the movie of it in 2004, and it received mixed results. Like, a lot of people just claimed it as it tried to cash in on the popularity of Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. It wasn't as creative. They even compared the set designs to Tim Burton, even though that the person who directed the movie was Brad Silberling, and he worked in a lot of other Tim Burton movies. So you can kind of see that kind of Tim Burton style. And then another thing that they complained about was uh, Jim Carrey's performance as Count Olaf, because he's so incredibly over the top. And uh, you, if you've ever read the original books, Count Olaf is supposed to be mean and sadistic and sinister. Uh, they felt that Jim Carrey was miscast as the character to Count Olaf. But, you know, the one thing that a lot of people do say about it is that, the you know, it's creative, it's based off of a great book series, and the kids who played as the characters were absolutely perfect. 
Uh, after 10 years later, the <sighs> movie has gained a bit of a cult following, and some people call it like an underrated classic. I saw this movie a couple of years ago, and there are a bit of problems with it, but it's not bad, actually. I mean, it's actually pretty good, and I would have loved to have seen the continuation of uh, a series of unfortunate events. You know, there were a lot of books that they could have done. You know, they only covered, like, the first three books. They covered The Bad Beginning, The Reptile Room, and The Wide Window. There were more books that they could have covered. There were ten more books that were released. And as time went on, you know, similar to the Harry Potter series, they probably would have continued, you know, as soon as a new book came out, they would have continued on with the series. But, um... Unfortunately, um, this is where our main topic comes in, in which, after the movie came out, the movie went on a massive delay. You know, eventually the kids started getting too old, or, you know, the movie didn't do as financially well as Nickelodeon wanted it to be. And then there was also the argument about, you know, the, 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 the fantasy craze was starting to die down. Jim Carrey was more than willing to go back into doing this movie, and then there was a couple of people who left from the project, and then the kids started getting too old. So yeah, this movie went through a massive delay until finally, like over 12 years later, they decided that they were going to scrap the movies and they were going to do an animated series on Netflix. But then that version got scrapped and now we're having a new version of a series of unfortunate events, which is like a reboot series in which is going to have Neil Patrick Harris as Count Olaf, which... It should be kind of interesting. I mean, I know Neil Patrick Harris is an amazing actor. Um, and Harold and Kumar. Yeah, exactly. Harold and Kumar, How I Met Your Mother, Doc, uh, Doogie Howser, a uh, whole bunch of movies. And, you know, if, if you haven't seen Neil's Puppet Dreams on the Nerdist channel, you have got to see it. It is so incredible. If you're a huge fan of Avenue Q or, you know, anything like that, I highly recommend you check it out. Um for younger viewers, uh, viewer discretion is advised because it's it gets a bit adult at times, but yeah. Uh, anyway, so what would have happened if the sequel to this would have came out? Uh, it would have covered more into the books and maybe it would have contained the same style. And there's not really much information about what would have um, transcended into the sequel because, you know, if, it probably would have came out like around 2005 or 2006, so... It was almost still at the point in which the series was, uh, in which the fantasy genre was still fairly popular. I mean, you know, because um, around 2005 or 2006, Nickelodeon would try this concept again with um, uh, the Spiderwick Chronicles. But anyway, um, what do you think, James? I think it's um, sad that um, the sequel largely got delayed, but... It was no big loss to me because I didn't write the original, even with Lloyd Christmas in it. As for me, you know, somebody who didn't really read the book series, and I knew everybody who read the books. I knew a lot of people who read the books. I mean, I was getting into, like, The Lord of the Rings, and I was getting into Harry Potter. Uh, Chronicles of Narnia, I was slowly getting into. I mean, I saw the first movie, and I really liked it, and it made me pick up the books again. But, um, yeah, ever, I was just getting so, so invested in those other fantasy uh, stuff that I didn't really have enough time to read any of the series of Unfortunate events, uh, events books. And then, eventually, uh, when I talked to somebody who was a huge fan of the book, and, they told, and, they, and I asked them, what did you think of the movie? They said it was absolutely horrible. It had nothing, it, it didn't follow anything faithful to the adaptations of the books, and so on and so forth. So... For a while, I didn't see it until a few years later when I did the Nickelodeon tribute and I wanted to review all the movies and then I got to a series of unfortunate events and then I did see a lot of the complaints that everybody said about when they reviewed this movie. The Tim Burton designs and Jim Carrey as Count Olaf and I mean the story was okay. I mean it was pretty interesting I have to say. The things that I did really like about it is that I love the set designs, I love the creativity, and I also like a little bit of the dark humor that, um, you know, Count Olaf would showcase, and you know, for the kids. And the kid characters who played as uh, Violet, Klaus, and Sonny, they were absolutely great. That's the one thing that I really remember from the movie. Um, other than that, yeah, it wasn't a major loss for me either. And as for how it would have changed cinema, not really that much. It's like Nickelodeon felt like it was so desperate to try to gain on the popularity of what the other companies were doing. It's like Warner Brothers had Harry Potter and, 
Disney had um, Chronicles of Narnia. New Line Cinema was the one who did the Lord of the Rings movies. It seemed like Paramount was trying so desperate to keep up with the times. So they decided, you know what, with all these with all these other, you know, companies getting into the popularity of all these movies, let's see if we can get into it. And, yeah, um, it just felt like they were just trying to cash in on the popularity, and that was it. We already discussed about this in Nikki 35 Part 4, in which... You know, that in which Clock Stoppers, it felt like, you know, Nickelodeon was trying to cash in on the popularity of Spy Kids, in which, oh, it's about a kid and he gets a watch and it can stop time. Oh, um, you know, similar to like uh, another, those movies of the Spy Kids, in which it's a kid, it's about a bunch of kids. They find out that their parents are secret agents. They get a whole bunch of cool gadgets. So it's like, yeah, I mean, this would continue on for Nickelodeon. You know, even like all the way toward the 2000s in which they felt like they needed to keep up with the competition. And of course, this wouldn't be the last time that Nickelodeon tried to cash in on another uh, fantasy series that they wanted to exploit like crazy. And that would be the Spiderwick Chronicles. And I already discussed about this movie in Nick 35 Part 4. And um, looking back on it, I am so appreciative a lot more of a, a series of unfortunate events because... The Spiderwick Chronicles was just so generic and so by the books of how to present a fantasy series. You have these kids, they find a fantasy world, you have these creatures, and the music. Oh god, the music. The music is so James Horner. The, th the theme song in which when they meet up with their great aunt, it's the Casper theme song! Oh, it's like... Seriously, James, come on, you're do you're so much better than that. Come on, you know, Terminator, Land Before Time, Titanic, Avatar. Anyway, but I'm 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 very sad about his passing because he left us too soon. But anyway, okay. anyway, back on topic. Yeah, the Spiderwick Chronicles that came out at the wrong time because a year later, when that movie first, when Spiderwick Chronicles came out. The fantasy genre was pretty much over. Lord of the Rings was long gone, was was past finished. Harry Potter was just about to release the last movie. And, um, let's see, Chronicles of Narnia, they struggled to, you know, release the, um, you know, their movies. They kind of went out of order. And so that kind of, like, put them into a corner in which the characters were getting too old. And then the, the third movie that came out, Voyage of the Dawn Trotter, it was considered to be the worst out of the trilogy. And so they pretty much had to stop. And, and then, of course, it didn't help that... That was when the the YA um, books were getting popular, like the Twilight movies were coming out. Oh, my. I wanted to forget those books and the whole franchise ever existed. Yeah. Honestly, it was one of the worst things to come out of uh, um, the late 2000s. Yeah, exactly. So after... After, you know, the Spiderwick Chronicles came out, there was no way of milking that franchise because, it you know, they released that movie way too late, and then a year after they released that movie, that was when the first Twilight came out, and everybody wanted to be the next Twilight. And then, thank God, that The Hunger Games came out and became more popular. But then again, it started branching out into more post-apocalyptic future um, movies in which it involves with teenagers killing each other. Like... Allegiance uh, and the Scorch Trials. I think Twilight was only really popular, uh, not as popular as it was. And I don't want to sound like um, I'm being nostalgia blind or anything. Was because I feel like there was very little, few parts of modern en entertainment at the time that were actually entertaining. So it, it probably seemed, not I mean, like so it probably seemed good in comparison back then. But um, but by today's standards, it's incredibly dated. And I saw the problems with the franchise before everybody else did. But it pretty much caught up with uh, it. Caught up, no, like it caught up with uh, it. So basically, nowadays it's one of the most reviled franchises out there. Yeah, true. Anyway, going back into the topic of a series of unfortunate events. Them trying to make a franchise out of it, it just wasn't there. The timing wasn't right, the casting choice was good, but it was a little bit inconsistent. The set designs were not very unique and kind of made it blend in with anything else that Tim Burton was doing at the time. 
and there were and it was heavily heavily overshadowed by Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter and Chronicles of Narnia. I mean, it, you know, even still to this day, it's still very mixed with people. A lot of people consider it to be a cult classic. Some people even consider it to be good in its own right. But then there's still a lot of people who say that it's, you know, not a really good adaptation of the books. But now, hopefully, finally, we'll be able to get a much better and faithful adaptation of A Series of Unfortunate Events with the Netflix uh, series uh, with um, Neil Patrick Harris playing as Count Olaf. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, so any final words to say about this right before we go? I don't really have much to say on the subject um, as of right now. Okay. All right, well, that's it for this episode. Tune in next time as we're going to be talking about um, an 80s cartoon that would have been done by um, Paramount, but eventually lost the license and was done by Sony. See you next time. So why does no